All right, again, Patrick helping us out shoot this. And we had to leave the grill because they are packed in there. A little bit of the 19th hole action. That's what the game of golf is all about. You talk about the round. You talk about the day's events. And let me talk about this room. All quiet now, but just another room to have any kind of get-together that you would like. The putting green, obviously. What a beautiful backdrop. But if you will, Patrick, just very slowly show them this room that can really fit the bill for just about anything that you would like to hold here at the club at Shadow Lakes. And I know Jimmy Maganello and everybody... His daughter Janet would love to see you folks out here celebrating an event. And uh, nothing like a little linen and china to make you feel right at home. And that's exactly what they do. Now, Royal Berkshire, much more coming up on this in the weeks ahead, including the Coons Market Black and Gold Sunday Show, July 23rd, just before they tee off for the final round. He will be joining us on the program, Alex Childs, who is the club pro at the place that is the Fox Chapel Golf Club that I absolutely love. So we're going to be getting into this a lot as we move forward to that very first tee time on that Thursday. But this is uh, truly an amazing place, a stunning coastal resort in the south port of England that people think it's one of the best links courses anywhere in the world. Before we talk about some of the players, just what can you tell me about uh, Royal Bur uh, Burkdale? Well, again, because it is a true links course, uh, the players are going to have to bring their best ground game. Uh, to to this tournament, uh, you know, in the United States, for the most part, it's an aerial game. Uh, when you get over to Scotland and England, and particularly the Lynx courses, uh, the premium is placed on your ground game. Let me ask you, being a designer of amazing, wonderful courses worldwide, and of course, this public course at the Club at Shadow Lakes, can you actually have a public course? that has maybe one Lynx hole, just to give people an idea of what it looks like. And I know it's kind of hard to do the whole fescue grass and all of the water, especially if you don't have that coastal body of water. But can you actually set aside, because of the terrain, maybe one or two holes that just kind of give somebody the flavor of what that's like to play? Absolutely. Normally on a par three, that's usually your best chance to do that type of thing. And you, you nailed it when you said, you know, the easiest thing for us to do out here is you have natural fescues. So you want to use your natural uh, vegetation and you would go ahead and, and sweep that all the way across the par three, all the way up to the tees. And uh, you would, you would uh, make sure that it wouldn't be too penal. So you want to make sure the par three wasn't too long and you'd have an extended uh, false front on your green and, your, and uh, uh, also have uh, uh, you know, your green approach where it was very receptive for a shot but then everything else could be tall fescues. So you're hitting over, just like you're hitting over water, you're hitting over tall fescues that encompass the whole tea complex. And that's just a, to me, it's just a terrific linksy type look. You think of Tiger, you think of Arnold, you think of Tom Watson, you think of Jack Nicholas, you think of those players that were American players who dominated these Open Championships when they were even known strictly as the British Open. Dustin Johnson obviously has the game, especially the length, something that you need. And Tiger definitely made a point because he could drive the golf ball so far whenever he played there. What do you think of his chances? And I know he's been struggling a little bit with some injuries and, you know, just trying to find his game. But if any place, a, a guy who can bomb the golf ball can find his game, this is really just perfect for him. Yes. Um, truly, what people don't realize as well is, I mean, Dustin is one of the longest hitters in the game, but he also ranks as uh, one of the best players uh, in the short game area. And that's something that he has vastly improved the last couple of years. And that's why he has uh, really been a contender uh, in the majors. And I think you uh, bring up a very, a very salient point is that the fact that with his long game, with his short game much improved, uh, again, getting back to the ground game uh, where you're going to have to do a lot of, of uh, extended uh, rolls, uh, uh, chipping the ball, um, you know, he can really, really, really show uh, his, his uh, talent. And I think that you go back to Tom Watson, you go back to Jack Nicklaus, the greatest players transcended you know, the game, they, they, they could go from an aerial game in the United States and they could be successful at the ground game. And that truly makes a great player. All right. You think of another player, uh, Justin Rose. Uh, by the way, this is the 146th contested Open Championship. He's a 17-year-old amateur at Royal Burkdale. 
and he finishes only two strokes out of eight. Omira Watts playoff. So the guy can play, and he's had game a long time. What do you make of Justin Rose? Well, I remember that. I remember that when he, he uh, you know, came onto the scene. And, uh, uh, of course, he is from uh, that part of the country over there in England. And, uh, uh, you know, he had played there quite a bit. But, again, you know, the conditions, what makes the British Isles so special is one day it can play one manner, and the next day totally different. And even if you're on your top of your game, it doesn't matter. And uh, uh, the people that can adapt, the players that can adapt to the changing conditions, they're the ones that are going to be at the front. You've got Brooks Kepka coming off the U.S. Open. The last time a player won the U.S. Open and the Open Championship, Tiger in 2000, Tommy Watson in 82. But what I like, and you're the expert, this guy can really launch the golf ball. Yeah. And he's strong. And that's what you have to be to be able to get the length. And also, when the wind seems to kick up more times than not, you got to be able to punch it through the wind. Correct. And, uh, you know, he's also a great friend of Dustin Johnson. You know, they're workout partners. Uh, these guys go to the gym on a regular basis, and, uh, uh, you know, he, uh, he ha does have a lot of the same game as Dustin, and I think the momentum certainly is going to uh, carry through. The open, the open Championship, Henrik Stenson has finished uh, tied for third or better four times, so he's about due to break through. I just like his game. It's a very graceful game. Yes, and I'm impressed at how successful he is over in the States. I mean, uh, the U.S. Open, PGA Championship, the Masters, the players. I mean, here's a guy that uh, from Sweden that primarily played in Europe for quite a long time and burst onto the scene here in the United States and, and uh, really, really has shown what he can do. And you're right. If anyone could win the tournament, it's Stenson. He lives in Columbus. He's from Australia. Absolutely love Jason Day. You know, when he won the Players' Championship in 2016, he was the best player in the world. And as we all know, golf can be very unforgiving at times. But what I know about all these players that I'm mentioning, and even the greats, what made him great, they just kept their nose to the grindstone, and I believe he will bounce back. And this will be a nice opportunity for him, Jason Day. Absolutely. You know, Adam Scott is a good friend of Jason Day, and, and he said that... Uh, Sooner rather than later, he's going to be back up on top winning majors. He's that talented. But more than that, he probably brings a work ethic to the game that is second to none. He really does. What do you think about Brian Harmon? He had a great game at the U.S. Open. Can he carry it over? Just Brian Harmon. You're Absolutely. I think that what's, what's really been great about the U.S. Open is, is uh, it, uh, it gave a chance at the venue of Aaron Hills to bring some of these players an opportunity to show what they can do. And, and sometimes all you need is that momentum and that confidence, that inner confidence, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, the sky's the limit for a guy like Harmon. All right, quick and Loans, uh, TPC, Potomac, Maryland, they tee off tomorrow morning. Last week, the Travelers' Championship in Cromwell, Connecticut, Jordan Spieth, my man, back wearing the Under Armour and back with a big check. Yeah, it's, it's, you know what, and, and here's a guy that you can just tell. He's just brimming with confidence. Um, he's, he's the type of guy that uh, I liken to a, a, a Tom Watson. I mean, uh, he's got just an all-around game. There's no, for someone hit, as young as he is, um, they're, 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 there's no weaknesses. Listen, he may not be from the United States, but I vote, I really and applaud players from all over the globe, and I love Hideki Matsuyama. He's the second-rated player in the, in the world right now, and he's finished tied for 11th and better of the each, each of the last three majors. Outside the majors, he's won five times worldwide uh, since the beginning of 2016. Uh, and if you look at the Hero World Challenge, you can make it six. His game really starting to catch on, catch fire. He's getting more and more comfortable. And I got to tell you, he's the guy I'm, I'm picking to win this thing. Well, I think that's, that is a great pick. I think Hideki not only is going to win a major, I, I predict that he is going to be one of the great, in the next 15 years, we're going to look back at his, uh, 
his tenure, and uh, he's going to be one of the greatest players of all time. That's how I feel. Sometimes we're just born with too much natural ability, and I think Sergio Garcia is one of those golfers, and I absolutely love him, respect him, so happy that he got the green jacket. But if that guy would have ever just focused a little bit more, I think maybe Tiger might have been the, the second guy <laughs> we'd have been talking about during that great stretch in the 90s. He still has a lot of upside. What a tremendous talent, and you can't count him out in this championship. And he's in great shape now. Um, you know, in the past, yeah. he may have not been uh, as We've in all been there, great Sergio. physical shape. Uh, but, and mentally, mentally now, the monkey is off his back. And if you talk to some of the people, his coaches over in Europe, they'll tell you that this guy now, he's unchained, and he's, he's going to be a multiple major winner. All right. Listen, I want to thank Patrick Deutsch for helping us with this, ladies and gentlemen. And, of course, Edward Willard, always a pleasure. Thank you. All right, folks, have a great night. Tomorrow night we're at the Beaver train station, and that Pratt Pack train just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. We're going to talk to Dick Shaw, longtime chairman, Michael Baker International, about the natural gas industry and the similarities when he was with Michael Baker laying the petroleum, the oil lines, the gas lines in Saudi Arabia, and he sees what's happening with this Shell petrochemical plant and a lot of similarities, which means good news for us. And also, the Great Carpenters Union, Keystone Mount Lake Regional Council of Carpenters, Rick Okrzewski will be there. They're going to have 6,000 workers there in Manaka starting very soon all card-carrying union members, and Mark Miner, the Beaver Area Heritage Museum. He'll get us all caught up. That's tomorrow night. Have a great rest of your night, and remember, isn't it time that you make a date for the club at Shadow Lakes? Good night.